Like any red-blooded American, I drink my fair share of toxic deliciousness from aluminum cans. And, like every red-blooded American, I fool myself into thinking that single-string recycling does a damn thing for the environment. The problem, other than that last sentence, is, like any red-blooded American, I am incredibly lazy and cheap. Which means I don't pay for recycling pickup, and in the ensuing months between my trips to the landfill, things tend to stack up. Now, I could just crush cans in my hand, stomp on them, or buy one of those shitty $10 soda can crushers from Amazon or Walmart or Harbor Freight. But, if you're anything like me, you'd ask yourself, how can I take this simple process and make it needlessly more time-consuming and expensive? That is what we're going to do today. If you'll just excuse me for one second. That's better. Now the goal is to hopefully build basically a pneumatic piston, pneumatic actuator. If you can't tell, I don't know what to actually call it. Pneumatic piston sounds good to me. And I guess this would be Again, don't know what to actually call it, a single action piston, meaning that the air only moves it in one direction. It doesn't move it in both directions like you typically see on like a hydraulic cylinder. So we're, we're only going to have one air inlet and outlet, and then the return action is going to just be springs. So we're going to attach springs that will bring the piston back up in the cylinder once the pressure is released. So. This is going to have effectively three parts, I guess. You're going to have the bottom of the cylinder, which is going to be open, so you can put a can in and take it out, crush it. And we're going to have the top end, where all the fun stuff happens. Uh, that's where air inlet's going to be, all the springs and fun stuff. And then, well, I can't screw that because it currently doesn't fit. We're going to have the piston. This will have a, a platen on it to actually do the crushing. We got a couple fittings here. We got some O-rings. And then these O-rings will separate the bottom half of the cylinder, the atmospheric low pressure side, from the high pressure side, and hopefully not just let all that compressed air blast past it. So the side goal, other than making a pneumatic cylinder, is to do it all with things I could get at the hardware store. So no special order, no specialty stores, stuff that you know you could do a, a weekend build, go out to generic name for a hardware store, no free clout. Pick up all the stuff and have it done by the time you get started drinking later that evening. I can already tell you, I failed that goal. I had to special order a couple things, not necessarily because they're weird, obscure items, but just because my local stores here don't have them for whatever reason. They're, I'll, I'll cover them when I get to them in the video, but just fair warning. Also, this looks suggestive. This is not a how-to video. This is going to be more of a, a how did, uh, how I did it. I'm really kind of bumblefucking my way through this. So this is more just going to be documenting my foibles and fuckery while trying to build something I have no idea how to build. So I think the first part I'm going to tackle is going to be the piston itself that moves up and down inside the cylinder uh, because the bottom end of this I can't really work on until I've got the top and the piston uh, made just so I can get the the right distance. Um, another thing I, I forgot to cover is I want the travel on this thing to be about six and a half inches so that way I can I can crush uh, standard 16 ounce you know tall boy basically energy drink or one pint soda cans beer cans what have you and to make sure I don't overextend those springs, I need to kind of have everything else in place before I cut this pipe to length and make my, my gate for the bottom. So, we're going to do the bottom part last, and like I said, I'll do the piston first. So I've got this uh, two inch Schedule 40, just PVC fitting, and it's going to have an O-ring on it that seals up the gap. You'll be able to see here, there's there's quite a bit of room on the inside of this 3 inch PVC pipe. Um, now obviously with it on the outside of that fitting it's too big so I'm going to need to cut a groove for the the piston ring basically. Now I mentioned I would cover things that I couldn't get at my hardware store and this is the first. 
Uh, this is just a big old O-ring. You can't really get those at your you know neighborhood hardware store. So I ended up just buying it off Amazon. Um, you can probably go to McMaster Car, Granger. In the past, I've gotten big O-rings. I've ordered them on um, Napa's website and just picked them up in the store. You can do the same thing for Granger. They're easy to get. You just can't typically walk into a hardware store and get them. Uh, this is a two and a half inch ID, three inch OD, just Buna and O-ring. And uh, the the bore of this PVC is slightly larger than three inches, but when it's stretched over that piston, it'll fit. And I mean, right now it basically fits perfect, so it'll be fine. Again. I need to cut some grooves for these to ride in so they don't just, you know. And to do that, loud, I'm going to make uh, basically a, a jig to set my Dremel in and rest this against so I can have a somewhat precise depth of cut for fucking around with PVC on my, you know, workbench in my shed. So here's the setup. I've got my Dremel uh, half-ass quick clamped to this fillet weld I had set up and uh, I've got my little uh, tool rest here just clamped to my table and uh, so hopefully I'll be able to just slide my cap up to this Dremel bit which is a little bit bigger than the o-ring and cut a nice little groove nice consistent symmetrical groove into my piston here. So I've got, I took some measurements, some needlessly precise measurements because we're working with injection molded PVC which is all over the map, um, but basically worked out to the depth of cut for a dead nuts perfect fit inside that 3 inch PVC is 115 thou. Uh, this is only 175 thou. <laughs> And so that doesn't leave me with a whole lot of meat connecting these two parts. It will have a slip fitting, the solvent welded up in that, but I don't think it'll go quite that far to where I want the groove. Um, so I'm going to start by taking approximately an 80 thou cut. And it's approximate because again, if you can't tell, nothing here is accurate. And this thing has so much run out, you can probably see it from Mars. But, um, oh yeah, and I've got the shop vac set up to hopefully not throw toxic plastic dust all over my shed. Let's give it a shot. Shut up. Well, that was fun. It took me a while, but, uh... Turned out pretty good. I did end up cutting a second ring um, or groove because through all my test fitting I realized what smart people have known for a couple centuries at this point is that if you just have one ring, you've got one contact area, the whole thing wants to cant over in the bore. So I did cut another one. Um, I may use it, I may not, but you know what? I was having fun and uh, it's probably going to help the whole thing not jam up in there. All things considered though, that came out pretty damn well for a freaking Dremel clamp to a table and some shims and making a huge goddamn mess. But for yeah, hand cranked uh, fuckery, that turned out smooth. The only thing though, I don't know if you're able to see it, yeah you can kind of see along the top there, uh, it is cut pretty thin uh, so hopefully when I got that slip fitting jammed in there that kind of reinforces it not a high stress part but uh, you know don't want it to break that's just a point for all the return springs to attach to on the top of the piston I might trim that down. Actually, no, I'll probably just leave it. Screw machine nut down on that. Maybe throw a little epoxy on it. It doesn't really need to be airtight because there's going to be that, uh, that slip fitting here and then that'll be, all be... And again, if it leaks, eh, it's probably leaking more around here anyway. Uno momento, por favor.
You know what, actually, I'm not gonna crank that down or seal it up super tight anyway, because I want that to be able to swivel if need be, so that way when I thread the top cap on, um, the springs don't get bound up on each other, because there's gonna be multiple springs going to this one spot. So hopefully to help minimize that, um, I'll just leave that spin freely. So, I've got this slip fitting that I keep talking about, that's that, uh, what, inch and a half? What what I say was? Two inch! It's a two inch fitting. Two inch slip fitting into that. I'm gonna throw some uh, PVC cement on it before cleaning it. And it's also got this uh, half inch pipe thread, which will come into play later. One last little addendum on this one. I'm gonna try to put a little bit of, helps to be in frame, super glue on the threads to just kind of uh, not kind of a thread locker, a literal thread locker. Um, I do have blue thread lock, but I mean, I really don't need to take this apart considering it's going to be solvent welded together. So, super glue it is. And hopefully I didn't put on too much. As if that's the thing. Oh, nice. Perfect. Alright, so that should be just about bottomed out up here, which means... Actually, let's give her a twist before she sets. It's not going anywhere. Well, that's where it's going to be. Anyway, that should uh, reinforce behind those grooves, uh, so it's not paper thin anymore. I'm gonna go wash all this solvent off my hands. I don't know why I was being so cheeky about these threads. I already showed you what they'd be for. I've got a nine inch steel pipe. I've also got this thing. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, anyway, that threads into there. Like so. And I'll have this chunk of steel welded to the bottom of it and this is actually what's going to be doing the crushing. Um, now this is a bit too long. I am going to trim it down to about seven and a half inches. That way I can still have that six and a half inches of throw without these O-rings getting dangerously close to the gate, the open section, and, you know, either snagging on it or just letting all the air pressure out. So I've got that. I'm going to trim that down. I'm going to cut this little donut out. That's just a, a line for aligning that, uh, that pipe there. I've also got loud. God damn. Uh, this little piece of aluminum I'm going to cut a circle out of, that is going to sit in the bottom just to give a nice flat, clean, and a, a little stronger than plastic surface to crush soda cans on. Why is this aluminum and why is that steel? Because uh, that's what I had. Why is this steel if I'm concerned about weight? Uh, because I didn't think about that till just now. If this does prove to be a problem between the, the drag on these O-rings and the weight of the piston, um, I can always go back to the hardware store and make a plastic bottom half of this. But uh, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. It's later now. The table's nice and clean. So, I've got the uh, squishy platen attached to the rest of the piston, and I, God, I gotta stop slamming shit down. I've got that little uh, reinforcement plate fit in the bottom cap. It looks like the moon. Um, welding, obviously overkill. Uh, you could get away with just using some JB Weld or epoxy. Also, if you're gonna weld it, Try not to TIG weld something that used to be galvanized, because you'll get all sorts of little pinholes. Still did the fucking thing. Don't pay any attention to those. So, I'm going to start on the top cap now. This is a uh, clean-out slip fitting. Uh, it slips over the 3-inch PVC, and it's got a threaded, I guess you'd call it a clean-out plug. At least how that's how I've seen it... Uh, labeled on the store shelves. So we got this guy here, we got already laid out and center punched. I'm going to put four holes, through holes, some very small 
oh God, I think it's it's not even a sixteenth inch uh, drill bit. It's small, just some pilot holes to thread some eyelets in there for my springs to attach to. And then this one is going to be for an air fitting. It's going to be a bit cramped in there, but uh, make it work. I think I got my four eyelets in there. I've broken steel bolts in aluminum housings before. I've never broken steel eyelets in a plastic part before. Let alone two of them. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to mix up some five minute epoxy and kind of let that sit in there. Not only to uh, seal up the, the little boo-boos from having to re-drill those, but also because there's, there's not a whole lot of meat a lot of thread biting in there, so that'll help uh, help hold those in there. Insert Windows XP to the sound effect. So the piston assembly is done. See, I sanded down the eyelets, so that the threads that were poking all the way through, and then I, uh, I drilled and tapped a quarter inch NPT thread there for my hose barb fitting. That's going to be the inlet and outlet for the air. And then um, I couldn't really get a good camera angle, so I just gave up and did it off camera. But I've got four springs in there attached to the eyelets. An eyelid on top of the, the lower piston, I guess you'd call that the top cap, this is the piston. You can call it whatever you want. I'm calling it the piston assembly. Uh, the springs were one of the things that I had a special order. Um, nothing I could find in the hardware store uh, did quite what I wanted it to do. These, uh, they're very short, but they also are very stretchy without deforming. The drawback, other than having to special order them, is they're not very strong as far as you know how much force they can exert which is why I have it uh, quadrupled up in there so hopefully that's enough you can see uh, a couple problems as I pick it up those springs expand under the weight of the steel so I'll see uh, if this whole thing doesn't come all the way back up I'll again um, make this lower part out of plastic instead of steel because plastic is way lighter. Uh, I discovered that over the past few hours, you know, groundbreaking stuff here on this channel. So a few bugs to sort out um, other than the weight, which we'll see if that's a problem later. Uh, the first is that because all of these four springs converge on one point, when you stretch it out, the coils kind of uh, weave, thank you loud Harley, your bike's lame, uh, still lame, go away. The coils of the springs uh, interlap, interweave, whatever English that is, and then as they release, the, the spacing is left long, which means that this isn't going to return all the way. So what I'm going to do is make some plastic or paper sleeves to go at least around the bottom of these coils and that way hopefully that should stop them from weaving together like that without adding any other drag. The other issue was this last spring because this is an open uh, I guess open eyelet you see how on the bottom there there's that little gap it's not fused. Um, when I pushed it all the way home under no tension the spring tried catching on that, which effectively made it shorter than the other ones. Um, so I'm going to make a little rubber bumper there, either out of some uh, liquid silicone or some little, you know, make washers or something, just so it doesn't get caught on that. God, I need to trim my fingernails. Um, other than that, this part's all done, and I can start on the cylinder itself. Bonk. So another thing I wanted to address is you probably noticed uh, this PVC says not for pressure. I'm going to be putting pressure in it. I went to Lowe's, I went to Home Depot, none of them had two foot sections of solid core PVC. I had to buy an eight foot section 
and I just didn't feel like doing that because I'm a cheap ass and a lazy ass, as we discussed before. Um, however, I went to a local hardware store and not only did I find a couple of these hose barb fittings that are 1 8 inch NPT, which will come into play later, um, that I had ordered online, and I found some different springs, none of which had quite the uh, extension that I needed, but anyway, I also found solid core 3 inch schedule 40. So moral of the story here is uh, don't put pressure in foam core PVC because it'll be a pipe bomb and support your local businesses. That uh, that local shop help me out. One little update before I go any further, I did end up making some cages or some sleeves for those springs. I ended up using post-it notes and some scotch tape. So those stop the springs from getting all tangled up with each other as you can see there. Um, the only problem that I could see happening is if uh, if those tear or I'm not using filtered air so if you know there's moisture in the air lines that could over time turn those to mush but pretty easy problem to solve. So pretty much cut a shape like this. I stuck it in the spring, folded it down, wrapped it around, taped it, being very haphazard just for a demo and then I took that little tongue and also taped that down so that way it's held captive at the end that would get tangled up down at the bottom here. Um, probably could have put that tab down on one end just so it was easier to wrap it around without getting all crumpled up. Another thing, uh, I should have done this as soon as I got the springs but when I bought them it said maximum deflection was seven inches which was fine because I needed about six and a half inches of travel and I didn't want them to deform like some of the hardware store springs I was playing with. These are music wire springs from McMaster Car. So uh, I took it and stretched it out to seven inches which said it was its max deflection it was fine and then I took it and stretched it further and further and further and it was still fine. So that tells me I should be able to get away with some heavier gauge or some heavier wire diameter springs. Uh, still not have them deform uh, when it hits its max travel and it will also be stronger to pull this whole thing out. That coupled with probably replacing the, the steel piston with a plastic one uh, should, uh, should get me set in the right direction. So let's keep trucking. Okay, so to figure out how long I need to cut that 3 inch PVC to I've got it sitting up on some cans here and I've got the clean out plug and a threaded plug installed. The piston is hanging down under its own weight supported by those springs probably around here and uh, so we take handy dandy tape measure go boop see that's about 13 and a quarter inches from the bottom of the piston to this edge of the PVC. So if I take this, we get our one pint soda can, measure that, and it's about six and a quarter inches. And I'll, I'll add a quarter inch or so to give it some headroom. You know, you figure that the pop tab will be leaning up a little bit, and that just gives gives me a little room. So did a little math of magic and that gives us 19 and 3 quarter inches from this edge is how long this whole thing needs to be. And now to rip off yet another gag from this old Tony. Me! So we're just about done with it. The only thing I have left to do is cut a gate in the bottom so I can actually put the can in. The astute among you might have noticed that I made a uh, stupid mistake with my math. Uh, I added the length of the can to the length that the bottom of the piston was off the bottom of the tube. I should have subtracted it and then just come in that number from the clean end or taken that number off of the overall length of the tube. So uh, it ended up being 17 and a quarter inches long is what I needed, not 19 and three quarters. So, oops. But, just about finished. And uh, while I was off camera huffing glue, I did make a plastic bottom end of that piston. 
it's really, um, well, I don't have the metal one because it's in there. It's really not that much lighter, uh, but it is a little bit lighter, so I have it if I need it. It's like two bucks worth of plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill a bunch of little holes around that gate, stopping short of the bottom tube and that metal plate that's in there. And I'll just file that lip down to fit. Uh, and then once I've got a whole bunch of holes drilled around there, I will uh, I'll probably pop a jigsaw in there. If not, I'll use a Dremel and connect them all, pop that out. And this thing will be uh, ready to go. Oh man, I had so much fun off camera. Should have been there. So anyway, I got that gate cleaned up quite a bit from the jigsaw roughness. Uh, I can now boop, just drop a 16 ounce can right down in there. I also swapped out the springs in the top of the piston here. They've got about twice the amount of, uh, I don't know what to call it, they pull twice as hard. They don't extend quite as far, but I've, I've tested it and they can extend much further than the throw of this crusher without permanently deforming. So that's nice and uh, it'll help from you know this big old thing getting bound up in there. On that topic I'm just gonna use this multi-purpose lithium grease because it's what I have. It's uh, should play nice with PVC and it's also nice and big so it should help seal up any little passages around the o-rings because the inside of an extruded piece of PVC is not the most perfect surface so there's there's all sorts of little divots and warps that air could potentially get around so lube it up I've also noticed that now is the time all the flies and wasps and bees in my shed have decided to make their appearance. I don't know if you can hear that, but they're very annoying to me. Give a little boop. Anyway, one other upside of swapping the springs out I forgot to mention is now that piston rests at a much higher height. So I've got plenty of room for a standard can, but I know there's some uh, Fancy Pants IPAs that come in a taller, skinnier can, so, you know, if I feel like being a man bun having weirdo, or just enjoying an IPA, I'm not a beer snob, get over yourself, um, it'll accommodate that, so that's nice. So now this is uh, just about done. Now, the only thing is, we've got this piston built, but we need to be able to get air into there, and then release it for those springs to bring the piston back up. So what I'm going to use for that... Hardware store, blowgun. Two of them, actually. That's where that fitting from the local hardware store comes into play. This is a 1 8 inch NPT by quarter inch hose barb fitting. So these blowguns typically have a 1 8 inch NPT thread on the outlet side and a quarter inch NPT thread on the inlet side, which you can use for, like, uh, airline quick connects and standard fittings. 8 inch is kind of oddball or... I don't see it a whole lot as far as hardware stores. And uh, so prepared off camera, I've got this guy that's got my inlet. It's got another quarter inch barb. So this, this is going to be my, my go button and this is going to be the dump valve. And to connect the two, yet another fitting. This one I did order. I think they had them at the hardware store, but I already had it by the time I went there. All of these are quarter inch ID and to pipe them all together, I'm gonna be using quarter inch vinyl tubing. So it has a listed working pressure of 30 PSI and a burst pressure of 90 PSI. So I did a little math. Hopefully I didn't screw this one up like I did for the, uh, the length of the cylinder. But with the effective area of the top of that piston, at 10 PSI, I get about 60 pounds of force. So if I have to exceed 30 pounds, we probably have a bigger issue. Yeah, here it is, the more or less finished product. I, uh, I gussied up the blowguns a little bit. See, we got go and ungo. And then I also made a stand for hanging it on the wall and a little holder for the controls, i.e. hardware store blowguns. I'm not gonna use this because I want it to sit flat on the bench right now, but I'm, I'm 
pretty proud of these. Uh, so proud, in fact, that I didn't record any of it. But uh, let's give it a test run. Why don't we? Framing. It works! That is rad. It actually works. I mean, I expected it to work the whole time. But it actually works. Now, before the grand reveal, this thing needs a coat of paint. So I'm over here now. Um, my camera decided to shit the bed in the middle of filming, so that's fun. But I've got it all painted nice and pimp and purple, all reassembled, mounted on the wall. We got some Teflon tape wrapped around with threads on that clean-out plug, so uh, that should stop a lot of air from leaking out around those threads. On that subject, full disclosure, I did end up making a new top segment of that piston that was in here. So I think the issue, uh, matter of fact, I'm pretty certain I know what the issue was, is that the sanding drum I used to cut the, the piston rings in this piston was larger in diameter or in thickness yeah. than the O-ring. Try. There's a chair there. Try to get. Yeah. So you can see there's there's quite a bit of of slop. In fact, there's probably about a you know thirty percent of the the whole thickness <laughs> of that thing. Focus. There you go. For it to to move back and forth. So instead of being pressed out against the the wall of that pipe, it just kind of did its own thing. So that allowed a, a lot of air to go by. Now over here, you can see uh, I switched to a different cutter. This is more like a mill cutter. Um, that's smaller than the O-ring in things. So to compensate for that, the O-ring has to squish quite a bit. And uh, hopefully that, that keeps outward pressure on the walls of that PVC. Because again, it's it's not a milled or bored or ground surface. It's just, as far as I know, extruded. So it's it's not super accurate. Um, and another thing is, is because this is a smaller diameter, I had to increase the depth of cut on those. And uh, that depth of cut was bigger than the wall of this cap. Uh, so I had to install that slip adapter, that two inch slip to uh, half inch thread before cutting those rings. Ask me how I figured that one out. So after all that horseshit, um, I'm sure you want to see this thing work. So without further ado, this video is brought to you. No, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I've got about 50 pounds on the regulator there. Um, so let's put us our Sody pop can in there, Sody pop, and uh, hit the go button. <laughs> that is, I'm gonna do that again. That was fun. Yeah. Nailed it. God, that is violent. works pretty damn well. This does everything. It does soda cans. Does tall boys. Does really tall boys. It does skinny boys. And of course it does short boys. So yeah, that's it. That's the build. I'm stupid happy with how this turned out. It, uh, it took a lot in the uh, design process and build process and stuff just Fighting me the whole way, a lot of stuff I left on the cutting room floor because it was tedious and frustrating, and I'd prefer not to remember it. Um, I might actually take the exhaust out of here and route it to a port on the back of the bottom of that cylinder so when I hit ungo, it boop, pops it out the front. But that's a project for another day. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you liked the build, and uh, if you liked it, why not give it a shot yourself? That, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.